What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC, taking a look at the Thrunite T1 Pro flashlight. Now, I've been really diving into the Thrunite lineup because I think they offer a really incredible value for the money. This light, for example, has a maximum lumen output of 1920 lumens in its brightest setting, and it's only $36 on Amazon. So, I think if you were to buy a comparable price model from one of the bigger brands, you're not gonna get quite that output. And if you buy something with a comparable output, you're gonna be paying a decent bit more, again, from those bigger brands. So really great value. They're also extremely well built and kind of no frill construction. So we have a hard anodized aluminum body on here. IPX8 waterproof rating, which is down to two meters and a one and a half inch meter impact resistance. So if you're dropping it from waist level or even shoulder level, shouldn't have too, too many any issues anything above that you're getting a little bit sketchy but should be pretty impact resistant overall now my favorite thing and probably the biggest factor for me that's not always easy to find in a listing for a flashlight is the user interface and they offer really simple user interfaces so I have a bunch of their flashlights and there's two different user interfaces that they use one has an infinity mode which is this is one of those and one doesn't both of them are ultra simple and once you have them down you just have them down so not a lot Lot of different modes they don't pack in like I just checked out I think uh, army tech light that had 11 or 12 different modes this one is only a handful of modes so it makes it a lot easier to operate so I really like that about it now the T1 Pro is being powered off a through night 18350 3400 milliamp lithium ion battery it is USB-C rechargeable it does come with the USB-C cord and it does have a nice dust cover there so it should be nice and dust resistant as well and so the 18350 is a larger battery meaning that by its very nature this is going to be a little bit of a larger flashlight but it still manages to be pretty compact for this class of light a little bit over four inches at 4.05 inches long the diameter is just a shade over an inch at 1.05 inches or 1.08 inches i'm sorry and i believe i weighed this one in at 3.82 ounces so pretty compact but it fills the hand really nicely it fits in my hand perfectly not too thick about the thickness of you know a roll of quarters or something like that and so not too thick at all now one thing that with this size of light that I really like is a tail switch. And this one, the switch is located on the side. I like this kind of overhand tactical grip and the tail switch just works really well in that grip. But this really doesn't have any other tactical features. So it makes sense that they placed it on the side for this particular flashlight. Now we'll definitely get into all of those different modes, but before we do, just wanna talk about a few of the other features. So we have this ultra deep carry two-way pocket clip, so you can clip this to your hat. I'd say this is probably the largest flashlight I'd want clipped to my hat. Anything larger than this, I have seen those two-way pocket clips on, and those are still good depending on how you're carrying it, but probably not something I would clip to my hat. But this one's just about that right size where it's still pretty manageable on the bill of your hat. Doesn't feel like there's something, a brick attached to the end of it, just weighing it down. So nice two-way pocket clip there we also have this small lanyard hole here in the back you can kind of see through it does come with a wrist lanyard as well as extra o-rings to keep that waterproof rating if those o-rings end up deteriorating on you and then my favorite feature that's not immediately obvious here is that that tail switch is magnetic with a really strong magnet and so it just grabs on and you can mount this different places gives you a lot more mounting options for this light and so with that being said we'll get into the light and the different modes now first off that button is pretty easy to turn on and off but not so easy that it's super accident prone in terms of accidentally turning it on in your pocket it's not impossible though it definitely can happen with the right contact on there and so there is a lockout mode on this flashlight which you can access by holding the button for two seconds and then it will go into moonlight mode first because moonlight mode or firefly mode in this case actually is holding it for one second and then once that firefly mode goes off you're going to be in your lockout now when you unlock it you hold it for two seconds again it's going to go back into the firefly mode and so for Firefly, I already mentioned holding it for one second turns it on. You'll see that light go on. And this is an ultra dull, dull Firefly mode, 0.44 lumens. So just gonna be for finding that keyhole, reading a little bit of text right in front of you, but it's not ultra bright. It does, however, run for 61 days in this setting, which is an incredibly long run time. Now I have this theory that a lot of flashlight companies use these ultra low Firefly modes so that they can say, you know, max output of 1920 lumens with a max run time of 61 days and that 61 days is really impressive at the point of sale but for me I think I definitely prefer a 5 to 10 lumen firefly mode with a shorter runtime I would be fine with the 
five lumen for 15 to 20 day runtime, and I think that's a lot more usable mode. Now, the saving grace here is that this is separate from the infinity mode. So this isn't part of the regular cycle and you can just skip right over it. And that infinity mode starts pretty low at 25 lumens. And so I can just skip over the firefly mode, never use that. And when I want that kind of duller lighting, I can use the 25 lumen mode in the main setting. Main setting is also really easy to get to. You just click it, it does have a memory mode, which it seems like I left it on pretty high, but we can cycle that down. And you saw when it flashed, that means we reached the end of the cycle. If I start holding it again, it'll start cycling back up. And so on the lowest setting, 25 lumens, it's gonna last 60 hours. So that's a really impressive runtime for that 25 lumens. I would probably cycle it up just a little bit, probably to about where we're at now. If I had to guess, this is a 50 to 80 range lumens. And so this, I feel like, would probably last a good 20 hours or so. It's a nice middle ground where it lights up the room pretty well, but you're also getting a really long runtime out of it. Now we can start cycling again. It's gonna go down because I was going up previously, but if we let go and hold it again, we'll start cycling up until we get to the brightest mode and you'll see that flash here. Now this is 1100 lumens. And this is a turbo mode on a lot of flashlights, 1100 lumens, gonna last for two minutes there before it steps down to about 600 lumens or so. And that'll last for another 200 minutes. And so pretty good learn time on that high mode of 600 lumens. That's also a really bright mode and probably more than I really need in most cases. So that 600 lumens is actually perfect for me. Now, this whole time there's been a light on on top of the switch you can see it's glowing blue right now that's going to be our battery indicator so anytime the flashlight's between 20 and 80 percent it's going to glow blue once you drop below 20 percent it turns red and 10 percent it starts flashing now when you're charging it it's red the entire time until you're at 100 percent and then it turns blue so you know that it's done charging now i wish there was one more setting on there and so that blue is a pretty wide range 20 to 80 percent you know if you're at 21 percent that's a pretty big difference from um, 100% and I'd like to know that I'm a little bit lower. Also with most flashlights, this one included, if you're under that 50% threshold, I don't know exactly where it's cut off. It could be anywhere from 40 to 60%. Your turbo and your high mode are no longer going to be working. They're going to automatically jump right into the step down. And so it would be nice if there was some indication that that was happening. So for me, I think it would be 100 to whatever that is, whatever that cutoff is, 60%, 50% is blue. After that, it flashes blue to say 25% turns red and then the last 10% is flashing red. But not the biggest deal in the world. You can kind of obviously tell, you have a good idea of how much you used your light, how much battery it has. And so it's not the end of the world, but it would have been nice to get an, one extra indicator out of that light mode. Now to get into our turbo mode, it's outside of the infinity mode. So just a double click, really quick to get in and out of. And that goes all the way up to our 1920 lumens, ultra bright, throwing off a ton of heat. And now this one burns through that turbo in two minutes before stepping down to 590 lumens. So just a slightly 10 lumen less drop down than the high mode step down. And so that's a little bit weird. I don't know why it's not identical. You also get a little bit less battery out of that 590 lumens, 160 minutes versus 200 lumens in the other step down mode. Now the reason for that is because the turbo burned through more of the battery. So it does make sense, but I wouldn't have minded seeing those be at least identical where we have the same step down on both of them. But again, both of them are so bright and the difference between 590 and 600 lumens is pretty negligible obviously in the lower range from 10 to 20 lumens is pretty noticeable but 590 to 600 not super noticeable now one last thing i wanted to mention about the just kind of overall light performance in this turbo mode 1920 lumens this is going to throw for 196 meters so right there almost to 200 meters so really nice throw on that it's ultra bright lights up the room really well nice clean crisp white light on this one as well really clean beam on it. Again, I think I already mentioned the dust cover charges pretty obvious once you hit that blue light, it glows really, really nicely. And then last but not least, we have a strobe mode. Then I always debate whether I should include these or not. I'm going to show it. So feel free to skip forward a minute if you're sensitive to strobe lighting, but triple click gets you into your strobe lights. I think this lasts for 3.9 hours, if I remember correctly, at about a thousand lumens. So, oh, missed it that with my index finger. Let's do it again. 
there we go. Here's our strobe mode, and again, it's gonna last pretty long time, nice and bright, and decent battery life out of it. I've never had any use for actually using a strobe load in my load outside of just kind of testing out the flashlight. I've never been in a scenario where I felt like it would come in handy and had my flashlight in hand at the time. So don't really get a ton of use out of the strobe, but it is nice that it's there. Overall, I think this is an ultra solid flashlight. I love the form factor. I think it's the perfect size for both EDC and just kind of, you know, taking the dog for a walk power outage. It just fills the hand perfectly, so really easy to carry around with you. Like that aspect of it, and I think a really nice output, especially again at that $36 price point, ultra affordable, and a pretty good looking flashlight. I don't think they offer any other colors on this one yet. Some of their other models they do, so it may be that in the future they might, but right now I believe I've only seen this one in black. Would love to hear your thoughts on this light down in the comments below though. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, joining the channel as a member all help the channel out a ton and I hope you have a great one. Take care.